everyone, it's Ross. In today's video, we're gonna be pruning the grapevines. I wanna show you guys how I'm doing that. Just really quickly, uh, you know, just show you guys the basics. First, I wanna talk about the state of the grapevines. Uh, we have two in the, in the ground here. One is Mars seedless. A lot of you guys really uh, love to ask me what varieties I, I grow here because they are a little difficult to grow here. I'm not gonna lie to you, grapes, especially the European grapes are quite difficult. This one here is called Himrod. And I used to have an interlocking grape on the end here, and this one died. And I don't know exactly why it died, but I have a feeling it was because I pruned it back quite a bit. And it now has re-sprouted from the base last year. Uh, we never replaced it because I decided I wanted to get this new grape called Everest Seedless. And that's a grape that was bred out of Cornell University. And it's similar to a Concord grape. Um, it has a great Concord grape flavor to it. Kind of like Welch's grape juice or the lots of jellies that we've had throughout the past in American history. Um, it's a very popular grape, the Concord grape. And I would consider growing the Concord grape because it's just so reliable. Even in humid climates like my own, you know, there's actually vineyards in Pennsylvania growing just, vine just vines of Concord. Uh, but the problem with Concord is that for the home gardener, it has a seed in it. Um, there is a Concord seedless, but uh, that one is a horrible grape, should not be grown anywhere. And, um, you know, basically I figured, you know what, I would like to grow a Concord, but now there's this new one out there that should have similar disease resistance to the original Concord seeded. Uh, but it's seedless now, and it's also bigger. It should be better. It should be an improved version of it. So we'll see about that, but we're going to put that one here. But overall, the Mars is doing quite well for me, and so is the Himrod on the end. Um, Himrod now has fruited for about two years in a row. Uh, Mars, this was the first year for Mars last year, and Mars really put on a show for me last year. I was really surprised. It's very strange because Mars had taken a longer time to get going than Himrod, but Himrod, uh, but Mars has been putting on more fruit, I would say overall. Between the two years that they have, uh, that Himrod has fruited, Mars has actually beaten it out in just one year of production. So now my vines, at least these two, are quite old. So I would say this is now their fourth year. Uh, maybe even their fifth. I'm not entirely sure to be honest with you. It's been a while. I would say they're just as old as these peach trees just around the corner. And I think my peaches are now entering their fourth year, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe I'm miscounting a year here. But point is, um, they do quite well, but with the humidity and the rot that we have in this area, it's very difficult growing them. Um, especially the leaves get defoliated, the fruit gets black rot. Uh, even though these are two disease resistant vines, also we have mummified berries that have fallen to the soil that I had just absolutely no control over. Um, I tried to get as many of them up as I could and try to stop black rot from proliferating here, but what we're gonna have to end up doing here in the spring, when these vines break bud is that about at a foot's worth of growth, we have to spray the vines. Uh, and that's new growth that comes out of these vines. Uh, we'll have to spray that with spectricide and munox, and that should basically keep the black rot at bay. And that's the only inorganic spray that I'm probably going to use, um, hopefully ever. I mean, that's the goal, is to not really use inorganic sprays. But I think in order to get quality grapes here, off of European grapes anyway, I think that's our only option. Um, we're also planting along this side because we had just taken out this bed here. It used to be filled with lettuces that didn't really do well here because we have lots of afternoon sun that comes in this way. And that afternoon sun really gets these lettuces uh, and makes them flower. So really not a great place for that. But we are gonna grow along this wire Similar to how we've done the other grapes here, 
is we're gonna grow some muscadine grapes, and those don't need to be sprayed one little bit. Uh, the problem with the muscadines is that they need a longer season than the European grape, and uh, we may not have a long enough season for them, but I believe we do. Um, also, they're less cold hardy. You know, uh, I did find two varieties of muscadine. They're called Lane and Triumph, which are supposed to be hardy down to negative 10 degrees Fahrenheit. These these vines obviously are much hardier than that. I'm sure that some of these could probably survive negative 20, uh, and that's the European style of grape that we're used to seeing in the store. You know, your typical table grape, etc. Um, so let's get into pruning these guys. It's really quite simple. Uh, I think the timing is important because we want to prune these guys in the early spring. Uh, the reason we, the reason why we do that is because if you do it too early in the season, I've noticed, I don't know if this goes across the board in other climates, but in mine, if I were to do this too early, uh, they seem to desiccate for whatever reason. The vines seem to desiccate throughout the winter time and they really die back because of that. Um, so if you cut them too soon and then let that winter desiccation, let's say we cut it back all the way to here, this is actually where we are gonna cut it, just about. And let's say now it has to go through the whole winter protecting this little section of branch. Uh, the chances of that happening is unlikely. In fact, you've kind of seen it here with this branch. This is dead. This is certainly dead. How, how do we know it's dead? Well, we can do the scratch test. Also, when you make a cut, see if there's green there. That's where the cambium is. That's the living material on a tree or any plant. Um, basically, we're just gonna come in here and cut these vines back to about three buds, maybe even two buds, and we're gonna thin some of these out. So this one here is certainly dead. Um, we wanna cut as close to the main vine here as possible. In terms of training them, there's many ways to train them. There's many ways to trellis them. I've done this the easiest way I know possible. Uh, in fact, we need to tighten up these wires big time because these guys are kind of slacking and, and uh, getting closer to the ground. What we've done above is we put a second wire up here. And again, that second wire is really pretty weak right now. We've tied it up to the fence and you can see it up there as well. We have another uh, section of wire and that's essentially gonna let these branches that when they come out of here, we then tie them to the next wire and then tie them to the next wire and that kind of keeps them um, you know, more disease free, gives them more airflow, more access to sunlight this way. We wanna get them over the fence for sure just because of where they're growing here in the backyard. You know, this is really your typical backyard style, I would say. Um, for somebody who's growing it like this. A lot of times you'll see them over top of arbors, gazebos. You may even have them on top of your house or something, you know. That's, I would say that's probably more typical. But if you're doing this, and you wanna do this very simply, just get yourself a 14 gauge or 11 gauge wire, put in some T-posts in the ground, and then train the vine. This is a, a young vine here that's probably a really good example. Train the vine up a stake, and then once the stake, or once the vine goes over the stake, you can then tie it to the main wire here. And then what we would do, because this is, let's imagine that this is the main trunk here. We'll cut it somewhere up here. And then this now, this main trunk, will then send out two buds. So it'll send out a bud this way, and a bud this way, and we need to tie them down along this wire here and as the season progresses those will continue to grow and then the following year maybe I've skipped a year here because ideally this takes a full year to get to that to the wire that's normally what a lot of universities recommend we get to this top wire we cut it here and then let's say at the beginning of this year then it branches out and I tie it to that and I only let it grow two different um, canes in either direction and then the following year which is the third year that's the year we start getting things like this, where they're growing up out of the main two scaffolds off of the vine here. We wanna lift the vine off the ground. That's extremely important. Uh, varying heights really depends on your climate and what you guys wanna do. I've seen vines as low as two feet uh, in Israel. 
Um, you know, you can do whatever you guys want. You can also do multiple tier systems. I've seen not only does they have a, you know, a system down here, but they've got a system up here, similar to my Aspiade Peaches. So they've got a system of vines down here and a system of vines up here, and that's what they maintain. And, and again, they keep coming back every year this is really up to you but they keep coming back to a number of buds so we got one bud here two buds there th and three buds there i think what i'll do is i'm going to keep everything to two and this is the permanent structure of the vine every single year you bring it back to this and eventually they form these things here i forget what they're called but essentially these this really becomes the most most permanent part of the vine and you keep bringing that back every single early spring. And that's really all we're gonna do. And we're gonna make really careful selections here. This one looks appear, appears to be dead. So again, you know, it's really all a matter of let's figure out what's dead. Once I figure out what's dead, then we can kind of space them out, figure out what along this vine is going to, uh, you know, fruit for me and just keep Keep cutting things back and see what's alive. I think I mentioned that. <laughs> and uh, and that's it. That's really It's really that simple. Just bringing the whole thing back every year. I think the hardest part about doing this and pruning them is really just the timing. Um, also, the training. The training is really, really important. Timing is everything with, the, with grapes, I swear. Uh, we also want to be dry farming. Our vines, do not water your grape vines. You will uh, have far less superior grapes. Also, your vine is kind of prone to root rot. We want to be growing our, our canes, our vines in um, drier areas if possible, but also keeping a, a level and constant soil moisture throughout the summer. All right, guys. Anyway, I hope that little lesson, that little lesson helped you guys out in some way. I know there's a lot of you guys interested in growing grapes. You can certainly do it in a whole host of climates throughout the United States. Pay attention to what diseases are in your area. If you don't know, you may have to just plant them and figure it out yourself. Uh, once you figure out what disease you got, then you got to come in here and figure out a nice little plan to protect them uh, and prevent that disease. The other things you need to watch out for, which I really should have mentioned, is the birds. The birds come in here every August and get a lot of my grapes. Um, if you don't protect them, and protect them before the grapes are even really fully ripe, uh, once they know grapes are here or know any fruit is here, as an example, the apples, once they know the apples exist, they're gonna go after the apples, you know, just like any other critter. So get that protection on as soon as you guys can and you should be all right. I know there's a lot of work involved with these, so if you're thinking about what you should and shouldn't grow, uh, this is one of the more difficult ones, right? But again, it really depends on where you live. Uh, someone could live 30 minutes from me and say, Ross, I don't have a problem growing grapes. Well, they may not have a disease in their area, even though they're 30 minutes away. So, you know, it really is location, location, location figure that out guys and i'll catch you for tomorrow's video please follow me on facebook instagram and twitter we're going to be doing a lot of things on there um giving you guys updates on what's going on in the garden what's going on in the orchard that we normally don't get a chance to do through video uh, it's really a real-time update like here's the onions down here we're going to plant these out and really only a couple days these are the walla walla onions um, this is the kind of thing that's going to be on the social, that is on the social media. You know, it's facebook.com slash Ross Ratty. Same thing with Instagram and Twitter. And here's some other seedlings that we're hardening off finally. Isn't that beautiful? All right, everyone. I've blabbed on long enough. Take care. I'll catch you all for tomorrow's video.